Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1210, Calculus 1 for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In lecture 21, uh, we're going to talk about derivatives of trigonometric functions. Uh, we've talked about a lot of algebraic functions already using the power rule uh, and also the product and quotient rules. We've also talked a little bit about the transcendentals, that is, we can take the derivative of e to the x. But we're now in a position where we can talk about derivatives of trigonometric functions. In order to calculate the derivatives of trigonometric functions like sine, cosine, tangent, etc., we need to first talk about limits involving trigonometric functions for which one very important such limit we've already talked about in this lecture series. Uh, you will hopefully recall that previously when we learned about the squeeze theorem, we had learned that the limit as x approaches zero of sine of x over x is equal to one. Um, if you don't remember that, by all means, click the on-screen uh, link to take a look at the proof of that. What we wanna do is push from this, this right here, sine of x over x equals one, we wanna push this over and show that the limit as x approaches zero of cosine x minus one over x is likewise zero. It turns out that these two indeterminate forms uh, will be very important as we try to calculate derivatives of trigonometric functions as these, in, uh, these uh, difference quotients will in fact show up there. In fact, I do wanna mention that these are difference quotients, right? Uh, type of things you see in derivatives. Notice, of course, that if you plug in zero right here into cosine, you're going to get cosine of zero, which is itself one. One minus one is zero over zero, which would be zero. Likewise, if you take sine of zero, which is zero, you get zero over zero, which is likewise one. So knowing this fact already established by the squeeze theorem, let's see why the limit of cosine x minus one over x is zero as x approaches zero here. So investigating this, first of all, consider our limit. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply the top and bottom of this ratio because we, we can't just plug in x equals zero right now. We're going to multiply the top and bottom of this ratio by cosine of x plus one. And to motivate what we're doing here, uh, think of the following scenario. If we have the square root of two over two minus one, and this all sits above pi over four, which again might seem like a weird fraction to be considering, but what have you. If this was our fraction, you were asked to rationalize the numerator then your process would probably be like the following. Like, okay, I'm going to take the numerator, which is the square root of 2 over 2 minus 1, but I'm going to add one instead that has switched the sign. You'll, of course, then notice that as you foil out the numerator, you're going to end up with a 1 half the square root of 2 over 2 times itself. You're going to get 1 half. Uh, then you're going to get a minus root 2 over 2, a plus root 2 over 2, and then you're going to end up with a minus 1 for which those guys cancel, you're left with this one half minus one, which is a rational number you can subtract and end up with a negative one half as well and leave the denominator what it is. Well, why did I pick these numbers right here? Well, if you come to this right here, if you took x to be pi over four, then you're gonna take cosine of pi over four, which is square root of two over, uh, square root of two, over two. Um, have we done the same thing with like uh, x equals pi over three? Uh, excuse me, pi over six, you'd end up with cosine as the square root of three over two. And we can go from there. I guess what I'm saying is because the because cosine and sine satisfy a Pythagorean relationship, recall that cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals one. Um, it's very much to be understood that cosine very much behaves like a square root function. After all, cosine of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of one minus sine squared. Like I said, cosine very much acts like a square root. It does in many situations. And therefore, in this situation, when you have this cosine of x minus one or a cosine of x plus one, we often want to think, well, I want to rationalize the numerator. That helped me with many algebraic settings. Maybe it'll help me with trigonometric settings as well. And so you'll see what happens when you FOIL this out. Cosine times cosine is a cosine squared. Uh, negative one times one, of course, is a negative one. But in all the other cases, you're gonna get cosine times one, a negative one times cosine, they cancel each other out. And so the numerator becomes cosine squared minus one. The denominator, well, we don't multiply out denominators. We leave them alone. So we're gonna leave it factored as X times cosine of X plus one. So what do we do with this cosine squared minus one? Well, the whole point of rationalizing it was that we can use this Pythagorean relationship. Notice that if we rearrange this thing a little bit, we're going to get that cosine squared x minus 1 equals negative sine squared of x, which gives us the statement we see down here. In which case, then we're going to factor this thing in the following way. The numerator, of course, can break up as negative sine x times sine x. Uh, and then we need another factor, so we're going to get a times 1. Um, and then the denominator, we're going to factor as 1 times x times cosine x plus 1. 
like so. And so we're going to put those things together. So this one goes together, this one goes together, and this one goes together, which you see far less messy written right here. We're going to take this, we're going to take the limit of negative side of x times sine x over x times 1 over cosine x plus 1. And we're going to treat each of these factors differently in terms of the limit. That is, the limit of a product is a product of the limits. So we're going to take the limit as x approaches 0 of negative sine, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, and the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine x plus 1. Now, the first and last one don't have any issues with it. By continuity, we can just plug in x equals 0, in which case you're going to get sine of 0, which sine of 0 is equal to 0. And then likewise with the last one, again, by continuity, if you just plug in x equals 0, you're going to get cosine of 0, which itself is 1, like we mentioned before, in which case you get 1 over 1 plus 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, so it's 1 half. So you get 0 times 1 half. Well, 0 times anything should be 0, right? Well, 0 times any number. How do we know that the third limit we haven't considered yet is even defined? Ah, this is the one we did earlier with the squeeze theorem. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is always equal to 1, and 1 times 0 is going to equal 0, thus finishing the proof that we we're looking for. So coming back up here, in summary here, these are two very important limits that you're going to want to memorize for future calculations. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x equals 1, that's the most important one, remember that. But we also have that the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x minus 1 over x is equal to 0. Remember those ones, you would want to, you want to memorize them in order to be uh, successful in future limit calculations involving trigonometric functions. Let's look at two such examples. What if we want to calculate the limit as x approaches 0 of x times cotangent of x? Well, in its current form, it not, might not be obvious what to do, but what we can do is use uh, trigonometric identities here. That is to say, what is cotangent? Cotangent is 1 over tangent. Uh, that is to say, it's cosine over sine, like so. And so even if we didn't use a calculator, if we tried to plug in x equals 0 right now, uh, we'd get a 0 in the numerator. You get 0 times 1, but then this is 0 on the bottom. This is indeterminate form, so we have to somehow remove the indeterminate form. This will come from factoring. We're going to take the limit as x approaches 0 of x over sine of x. So we're going to put that one together and then let cosine deal with itself, well, all by itself. Uh, because as x approaches 0, cosine is going to go to 1. There's no problem with cosine. Um, cosine there is just going to become a 1. The issue comes from as x goes to 0, you have an x on top, which gives you a 0, and a sine on the bottom, which gives you a 0. So this this right here is where we get 0 over 0. But like we saw in the previous slide, this indeterminate form has already been dealt with. Now, admittedly, it's upside down, right? But that just means that when we take the limit as x approaches 0, by continuity reasons, as x approaches 0, we're going to end up with the reciprocal of negative of 1. The reciprocal that is 1 to the negative 1 power. That, uh, you know, reciprocal, so we get 1 over 1. You know, times that by 1. But of course, 1 divided by itself is still 1. This is going to be 1 in the end. So that's another thing to remember. If you ever have to take the limit as x approaches 0 of x over sine of x, that likewise is equal to 1 because it's the reciprocal of 1. So okay, there you go. You can see how that limit comes into, comes into play here. It's very handy. Uh, let's consider one last example in this video here. Let's consider the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 7x over 4x. So notice... We've now changed the period of sine. Um, now, in this situation, it's like the denominator doesn't quite have what I want. Um, this common factor of 4 could come out of the limit calculation. And we end up with the limit, or we get 1 fourth times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 7x over x. Now, this isn't quite what we had before. So we know that limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, that'll be 1. But how does the 7 affect things? How does the change of period? Well, I want you to think of the following idea here. What if we make the substitution that theta equals 7x, like so? All right. So if theta equals 7x, note that as x approaches 0, that means that theta will approach 7 times 0, which is equal to 0. So as x approaches 0, theta will also approach 0, although the, the rate of which they are approaching 0 is slightly different because of that factor of 7 right here. So what if we do the following? What if we multiply top and bottom by 7 over 7? Uh, that's just the number 1. It doesn't really change anything, right? But because of limit properties, this 7 in the bottom is allowed to come inside of the limit. It's just a constant multiple. And so we end up with 7 over 4 times the limit as x approaches 0 
of sine of 7x over 7x. Now we're going to make this substitution, right? Theta is equal to 7x. So this becomes 7 fourths times the limit of theta as it approaches zero. Because again, as x goes to zero, theta goes to zero. And you end up with sine of theta over theta. Oh, that's equal to one. So we get 7 fourths times one, which is equal to 7 fourths. Now, in retrospect, it's much, it's very easy to detect what happened here. Notice we started off with a 7 on top and a 4 on bottom, 7 fourths. Uh, basically, as we've seen before with various uh, limits, as x is approaching 0, it turns out that sine and x approach 0 at the same speed, which is why the limit turns out to be 1. Now, because of these uh, stretches that have happened, these factors here, we've changed the factor, and so now uh, sine is approaching x, excuse me, x sine is approaching zero, basically with a seven to four ratio, because uh, we sped up the sine and sped up the four, or sped, sped up the x as well. And so my point of this is that these limits, the sine x over x, cosine x minus one over x, knowing these limits helps us to calculate various uh, trigonometric limits, which are gonna be of the form zero over zero, these indeterminate forms. These tech, these memorizing these things will be of crucial for us to calculate trigonometric limits. It'll also be the crux for which we can calculate trigonometric derivatives, which we'll see in the next video of our series.